In this recording, we're going to run an OLS regression to estimate the wage equation specified in Gucciarachi's Econometrics by Example, Second Edition, Chapter 1. What we are going to do is show how to run the regression in SPSS using the same data as Gucciarachi, and we're then going to interpret the results. We're going to recreate the output presented in Table 1.2, Wage Regression. A link to the data will be provided in the description box below. So once you've downloaded the data and opened it in SPSS, this is what it looks like. We have the wage of individuals, whether they are female, non-white, in a union, education and experience. We also have age and weeks, which aren't included in the Gucciarachi example, so we're not going to include them in our analysis. So in order to run our analysis, we can simply select Analyze, and then we're going to select Regression. We just want to run a linear regression model. Now, what we basically need to do is select our dependent variable, which is wage, and add it as dependent. We then want to select all our independent variables from our list and add them as independent variables. So we want to add female, non-white, union, education and experience. Once we've selected our wage variable and once we've selected our independent variables, we can simply click OK and this will run our analysis. We will see we get our output screen opening and it runs through the analysis. We can see in the first box, variables entered and removed, the list of variables we have entered, and also the dependent variable, which is wage. What we typically want to look at, and the order we're going to look at it in, is we'll first look at the ANOVA table, specifically with reference to the SIG value for the ORS, or for the F test. What this is, is basically a test of whether the regression model is statistically significant or not. Think of it as having the null hypothesis that the R squared is equal to zero, i.e. it has no explanatory power. If we can reject this null hypothesis, it means that the regression has explanatory power and our independent variables have power in explaining our dependent variable. What we're interested in is a sig value less than 0 0.1, 0 0.05, or 0.01, indicating significance up to 90, 95, or 99% level, respectively. What we can see in our instance is, as the SIG value is 0, we can reject the null hypothesis at the 99% level, it's less than 0 0.01, and therefore conclude that our regression model is statistically significant. Having done this, we can then look at the OR squared of our model which gives an indication of the goodness of fish. So our model overall is significant. We can now check how good it is in terms of fish. The R squared for our model is 0.323. This indicates that 32.3% of the variation in Y is explained by X. Remember, the R squared is our coefficient of determination. In this case, it means that female, non-white, union, education, and experience explain 32.3% of the variation in wages which is quite a reasonable and respectable or squared for our model. Once we've looked at the or squared then, we can move on to the significance of our individual coefficients. Again, we're going to interpret these sig values in the same way as we interpreted the sig value for the F test. This sig value relates to the individual t coefficients for each of our independent variables. So. Let's take a look at the constant. We've got a beta of minus 7.183. We divide by the standard error of 1.016, giving the t-value of minus 7.072. We could look up in the t-tables the critical value for this, um, degrees of freedom and significance level, but the sig value gives us a quicker way of interpreting this. As the sig value is below 0.1, we can say that this variable is statistically significant. Specifically, as it's less than 0 0.01, we can say it's significant at the 99% level. Likewise, for female, we can say it's significant at the 99% level, and for non-white, it's significant at the 99% level. When it comes to union, we see we have a sig value of 0 
This indicates that this coefficient is significant at the 95% level. It's less than 0 0.05, but it's not less than 0 0.01. So we cannot say it's significant at 99% level. Instead, we say it's significant at the 95% level. Our final two variables, education and experience, we can see are significant at the 99% level. Now, what we do once we've identified our significance variables is we interpret the coefficients. Now, if we have a p-value or a significance value greater than 0.1 here, that means that the coefficient is not statistically significant. And basically, that means the coefficient does not differ from zero. So we don't interpret that coefficient, as it has no meaning in terms of its effect on y. The effect on y is zero. In our case, however, what we can see is they're all significant, so we can discuss all of these coefficients. A negative coefficient indicates that it has a negative effect on wages. A positive coefficient indicates that it has a positive effect on wages. So as we would expect with union membership, this increases your wages. Likewise, higher levels of education and experience increase wages as well. It appears that our dummy variable representing female is statistically negative, indicating that females earn less than males in terms of our wage equation. So when we're running through our interpretation, we would pay particular attention to the sig value for the f-test, the or squared, the sig values for our independent variables, and then the coefficients for the significant independent variables. Okay. And that's how we would work through our regression analysis as presented in Gucciarati, um, basic econometrics by example.